So, J-Man, what are we doing here? Oh, booting me out of your Insta. Topic today is imposter syndrome. So, which did you like best? Right. Option imposter one, two, syndrome. Three. I just asked. I just asked to rejoin your your Insta cast. Okay. For some reason, your Insta cast wasn't working. Does there we work go. I'm adding you again. Yep. Cool. So I think we're live. So, what is today's topic? The, today's topic is imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome. I feel like it's a great it's word that's thrown a lot around a lot when talking about social media and business and sales and confidence. So I figured we talk a little bit about it. So, so Mr. Oh, J, man, since it's your yes. topic, what is imposter syndrome? Oh, yes. Well, hey, sir, uh, imposter syndrome, also called perceived fraudulence, involves feelings of self-doubt and personal incompetence that persists despite your education, experience, and accomplishments. You know, th this can happen when somebody gets trained on uh, live video, right? Somebody gets trained and they go, uh, they know everything. They're competent. They definitely can do a great job, but they're like, uh, I don't know if they even want to hear me or not, uh, I can't do it anyways. It's I, and to me, it'll, it, it's, it's that self doubt is what that imposter syndrome is. Like I, it's that I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. You know, <clears throat> yeah. You, you know, you went to MIT and you have a, a PA, a dual PhD in quantum mechanics and physics. And, uh, yeah, mm, uh, you know, I need to learn more. <clears throat> and I think a, a lot, a lot of that imposter syndrome, people also have what's a sales call reluctance is an over preparer, meaning. I'm not oh, yeah. prepared enough, so I have to prepare more in order to feel like I'm not that imposter. So I think this is actually a really good topic. I think it's a really good topic. Thanks. So where do you want to begin? So let's let's actually break it down. So let's talk about the definition. So the definition literally is no matter what education, no matter what background I have, I feel like I'm an imposter that I'm not good enough. Right? So let's ask this question. How many of you actually felt that way? How many of you have actually felt that way before? Uh, I think there's ever getting an echo. So I need to uh, see if I can plug it. Jay, man, you were right about the headset. Oh, wait, say that, say that louder. I just got to get this DJ air horn ready for you. You were right about the headset. So I'm going to plug it. E -oo, e -oo. There we go. Yeah. Echo should stop so, now. So there's an echo on Insta. I, I, right. could, I could tell oh, listen, you that. When it comes to tech stuff, I normally don't question you. Okay, good. Um, I would say I felt that way in the beginning of my real estate career, right? I, I came from a sales background. I came from a cold calling background. I was more than qualified, but I was younger. I was 25 when I first started. Even when I had the training, I still felt like when I went on a listing appointment, um, and it kept me from moving from one broker to another longer than it should have because I felt like it wasn't me that they were hiring. It was the brokerage. <clears throat> yeah. And I, I don't, I think it has to do with people when maybe you are younger getting to this business, you know, you, you could come from another sales background, you know, maybe you were selling, <clears throat> we talked about this the other day, maybe you were selling yachts and now you go into a luxury real estate price point and you're like, well, I only know yachts. Listen, that's another luxury price point. It's another luxury item. So it's that self doubt. So this is the thing you might have the competence, but you don't have the confidence. Ooh. And the only way confidence is your reward for getting something done. That really is. How do you know you're able to do something when you actually do it? Right. It's a, it's a, so the memory of the history of your successes. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So confidence is the reward for getting something done. So it's like, hey, is that I'm not good enough. I'm not this. I'm not that. I have to learn this more. I have to go to this extra class. I got to take this other webinar. I need this designation. Right. I, I say horse doo doo. You know, go out there <laughs> and do it because there's no better experience than actually. I know. There's no better experience than going out there and actually doing it. And that's what builds your confidence. And I think that to a certain extent will get rid of imposter syndrome. And you know, a lot of people say, why me? Like, why would they list with me? I'm going to change that and say, why not? Why not you? you? Oh, oh, jinx. Oh, Double wait, jinx. Wait, wait, I got him. Wait, wait, I got the air horn today. 
<laughs> Why I not you? Absolutely. I, I think that's I, I think that's a good a good point. You know, I, I think it's I think we all get in our heads too much and we we stop ourselves from making money. We stop ourselves from making successful. From being successful. Why not you? I love that. Yeah. You know, because it, it, I, you hear it. I'm sure you hear it all the time with million dollar listings, where people are like, "I don't know, I'm just not ready." They're just people that list with other people yep. that they like, know, and trust. So why not you? They don't go. Hold on, hold on, Jeffrey. Do you have the luxury? Uh, does it before you come in? Hold on, let me check your does it. No, come on, dude. <coughs> this doesn't happen. <clears throat> Got to ask. Ask Frederick or the Altman brothers or Josh Flagg or any of those. Do you have the luxury designation? They don't get to ask those questions because you don't need the luxury designation. What, well, what like people do business with you, forget about that they know you like you. They don't have to know you like you and trust you. But it's also the confidence that you have when you speak. It really is the confidence that you have that. Can I say this without questioning? What do you? What? I don't even know what he's doing. I got the confidence you remind to do me whatever of I want on a live stream. Huh? Oh, shoot. Yeah. You, you remind me of Apollo from Rocky. Well, I won't have the same outcome. <clears throat> a pity. A pity. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, to me, it's take, I'll give you a perfect example. So we run, we run a boot camp, which is we meet, it's for, for newer agents or agents that are making less than $150,000 GCI a year. Because for us, those are the agents that we need to bring up to making 250, 350, 550, 750,000. <clears> so we had a new agent, Kat, out of, out of uh, uh, um, California. And you know, part of the conversation we had in class, people told me, well, how do I move to a luxury price point? How do I move to a luxury price point? <clears throat> She's been with us a month, been in the business two months. Her first listing taken from during the boot camp, $4.6 million. Yes! Brand new. Let's go. Brand new first Let's listing go. ever listing signed and done. And you have other agents. Oh, well, I'm stuck in an $800,000 price point. How do I get to that 2 million? How do I get to that 5 million? And listen, for your marketplace, it may be a $400,000 price point that you're trying to get to a $650,000 price point. It's the same. But with her, it wasn't that imposter syndrome that I'm not good enough. Because her thought was, this is mine. It's the seller's not going to give me this listing. I'm going to take the listing. Going to take it. And that mindset changes. And that mindset absolutely switches that imposter or or that self doubt or that over preparer. You know, I would love for my first listing ever to be you know over four million dollars. Like to me, like holy crap. Yeah. And that's not her. That's not the average price point in her area. Her average price point is probably like one point two, one point three. Yeah, well, I remember talking to a, a broker out on, on Long Island, and she was like, "Oh man, I mean, this market. I'm having to take listings under a million, and and I'm like, I was like, I'm done. I can't even talk to you. Get out. I wanted to just throw the mic and just walk away. Like, you're having to, you're having to go under a million. Oh my gosh. Like, uh, it's just a different world. And like yeah. you said, I'm coming for that listing. Why? Why shouldn't I? Why shouldn't I have it? Yeah. And we say as a company, you know, luxury is personal. Like that luxury, what is that luxury price point? Is that luxury price point of having that big backyard? Is that luxury to you of having that in-ground pool? Is that, what are you doing? I'm messing with my Insta on the other side, bro. Oh. But it looks is weird on the thing. Is that luxury of having an in-ground pool? Is your luxury of, you know, what, what's luxury to you and your price point? Because a lot of people say, oh, luxury's over a million. Listen, New York City, luxury's, New York City, Manhattan, luxury's not over a million. But for a lot of areas, a luxury might be six hundred thousand. It might be five hundred thousand. It me. might be four hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. I know some areas where I used to do business where a luxury price point was three hundred fifty thousand dollars. <throat> so it's it's. I think that imposter syndrome, and I like this conversation because it brings us a bunch of different places. I think that imposter syndrome stops us for stops us from moving up to that price point or asking for a larger fee. And I'm not going to discuss a fee. Asking for a larger fee that you don't believe you're worth it. And I believe you're all worth it. Ah, oh, dude, let's not get into fees, but during the pandemic, which we're, I guess we're still in it, but I mean, when, when we first went into, uh, when we were deemed non-essential in the beginning and we couldn't show houses, and I heard that again and again and again, people going, oh, well, 
I mean, how can we charge what we charge when we're not actually there showing the property? I'm like, yo, people don't hire me to do this. Here's the kitchen, no. right? They hire me for this, for my brain, for my knowledge. And this is what I'll say about fees, where all fees are negotiable, there is no set fee, but you will get you will get the fee that you truly believe you are worth. You will Baby, never get a dollar it. more. Baby, you're worth it. And it doesn't matter what that number is. And I'm not even say X number of apples, whatever. You will get the number you believe that you're worth. Or are you thinking to yourself that imposter syndrome, oh, I haven't sold enough homes yet. I haven't gotten to that price point. I never did this. I've never. So I think this imposter syndrome is, is a really great conversation. Thanks. So we have a bunch of people watching it all over the place. So who has a question? Do you have a question about imposter syndrome? Or does somebody want to open up to us and maybe, you know, you're a victim of your own imposter syndrome. And I noticed you said this. Notice how I said it. You're a victim of your own, not a victim of imposter syndrome. You're a victim right. of your own imposter syndrome. So does anyone have a, 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 on that? Because I think, I think a lot of agents do. And I, I think anyone, you know, anyone. Yeah, and, and I think, and I think, you know what? I, want to tell you, I, I talk to a lot of agents who think about coming over to the company, and I think a lot of times they decide not to come over to the company because they would prefer to be a big fish. Well, actually, I had an agent say this to me. I want to be a big fish in a pond. pool, a small pond. Small pond. And I'm like, pond. but you understand you can make more money doing X, Y, and Z or doing this, working for us, working with us, whatever it happens to be. And they're like, yeah, I'm not ready for it. And I'm, I'm like, listen, I wouldn't be having the conversation with you if I didn't think you were ready for it. But I, I think it's that like, they don't want to push themselves. And J-Man, how do you get better at anything you do? I do more of it. And do you do more of it with people who are worse at it than you? Oh, no, no. I, I try to find people that are smarter than me, better than me, so that I, I feel like, oh, my gosh, I, I have to That's raise the level. That's why on the podcast. <laughs> why? Well, I, I made the exception to that rule here. <laughs> no, but what it's a true. setup. Like, that was a setup like a mo, but yeah. <laughs> but it's true. You get better at things by doing it with people that are better than you. You want to get better at pool. You want to get better at basketball. You want to get better at sales. Do it with someone who's actually better than you because that increases your level. Always will increase your level. When right. you do the same old and like, oh, I'm number one in my office. You know, I do X amount more business than everybody else. Great. Good Love for that. you. Good for you. What are you doing next? Or is that your plateau? Is that what you want? Maybe that. Maybe that's as high as you want to hit. Or... Do you have that imposter syndrome that will not allow you to strive for greatness or strive for excellence or strive for, you know, doing a million dollars in business or doing $5 million in business or a hundred million dollars in business because mm, I'm comfortable where I am. I don't think I can do that yet. Hold on. I'm going to hit you with one of these. My glockenspiel. Well, <laughs> I know what I'm too. here's uh, and I was thinking about this the other day. I was having a conversation with a relative and they were like, oh, man, I could never do what you do. I'm like, what do you mean? Well, <laughs> if you don't sell anything, you don't make any money. And I'm like, well, what happens if you go to work and you don't do your job? I'll get fired. Same thing. Same thing. I just... Look at my pay becomes effective when I do. I always I, I wake up unemployed every day. I, I wouldn't say, have it any say other that way. Line again. My, my say pay, that line again. My pay becomes effective when I do. Right? I had a sales uh, sales manager when I was probably nineteen. He'd be like, "This is great, man. You wake up unemployed. You control your destiny." Like I will never be unemployed. I will never not have a job. I, like I have a career. I have a calling. Let's say that. That's how I feel about it. Getting hyped up, and, and let's let's actually talk about that. So, this is the thing. I love that Jamie said I have that calling. I have the career. No, I have that calling. I used to start out, you know, when I when I teach classes or like we'll be on the daily role play calls, whatever it happens to be, and they're like, "Oh, Jeff," but you can say it that way because you're Jeff. And I turned around and told him, I said, "The only difference between me and you is the amount of time that I practice doing what I'm doing." 
Right. You can get as good as me if you practice as hard as I did. You don't need 25 years of experience. It's the practice and the cadence of having that confidence in what you speak. So there's a difference you can, and everybody can say right or wrong in the chat. When me and J-Man speak, you will never hear a lack of confidence. We can be 100% BSing you, is the truth. And you would never know because you're like, oh, he's confident, he has to believe it. Am I right, J-Man? Oh, uh, dude, I'm so good at Scrabble. I am so good at Scrabble just, just because of that. I'd be like, go ahead. Do you want to challenge me? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a total I, I, I have an attorney who, who I'm real, who I'm good friends with does business with our company, Jerry Feeney. So we're playing Scrabble at his house in, at the lake and he's an attorney. So he takes out the dictionary and goes, do you want a challenge? Like, That's it. Puts and it he on the slides table. slides the dictionary over to me. He goes, do you really want to challenge me? And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it. You're too kind. Like, I I don't I think after the fact my girlfriend looked it up and was like you know that wasn't even really a word I'm like I wasn't challenging him mm -hmm. I believed him mm -hmm. but it comes with experience and I think that moves you from that imposter impersonator syndrome imposter syndrome all that self doubt to let me speak with confidence and how you speak with confidence is you speak deliberately and you rehearse I can and you practice I will end of story was it do do be have, do have be. You talking like Yoda? <laughs> what are you saying? Do it's like do. Uh, do the work I mean, I, and you will have. I don't. I don't know this. I, don't know. I I can remember being in when you talk talk about confidence. I was teaching the ABR class in a more challenging area, and and ABR sometimes if you're in an area that really buyer representation is newer, if you could imagine that in the United States. And, and then they go, this will never work here, ever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay. And it's at those types of class, like I'm going, I'm going, and then finally I got to go like this. You can drop me out of an airplane tomorrow and I will take over your market with everything that I'm talking about right now. And then they're like, okay, okay, all right, all right. I'm listening now. I got <laughs> Uh, because I be do have, I'm, thank you, Lisa. Be to have, be do be have. have. Okay, be do have. I don't even know where I was going with that, but thank you, Lisa. So it's it's funny how our conversations just go like circular, but go way out and then circle back into the same topic, because it. Listen, I have people on my trainings at my company that literally make. Five million, ten million dollars, twenty million dollars a year. Like legitimately, agents, brokers who make that amount of money. <clears throat> and listen, I don't make twenty million dollars a year. I don't make five million dollars a year. But why will they listen to you and go through this? Because it's that confidence, and it's not an imposter. Like I know that when I open my mouth, my mouth, my whole goal is to value. So as long as I'm doing that, and that's my whole entire goal, and that's how I can speak confidently is because I'm going to open my mouth and bring value to this conversation, value to this class, value with ever. That's why people listen to me. And I think it's the same thing in sales. When you open up your mouth and say, I'm going to bring value to this conversation, and I'm going to speak because I know this. Like, I think that imposter syndrome totally goes away. And I think that confidence shows through because you could have, Jim, think about this. You could have all the market data in the world. You can have all the analytical information in the world. If I was talking to you and I said, uh, well, you know, the average uh, price per square foot in the area, um, it's <laughs> like, right. Right. I might have all the data. And I'm like, look at our median sale price is $153,576. Boom. Okay. That's not it. I don't know if he's lying to me or not. I believe <laughs> right. it. <laughs> right. This is, when I saying lie to people. Right. I just want to say, we're not saying lie to people. <clears throat> just it's, it's that confidence. And I think part of that imposter syndrome again is they don't have the, don't have the confidence yet, but they haven't built the confidence yet. Well, and, and I, I want to bring it back to, to live video because I, I hear this a lot when people are like, well, why am I going to go live? You know, nobody wants to hear what I have to say. I feel like I don't know enough. I feel like I might say something stupid. I'm like, well, you're talking every day, aren't you? You talk to people every day. Yeah. Well, do you, do, you, do you write a script before you talk to your client face to face? No. Do you write a script before you leave a voicemail for your client? No. 
just do the damn thing. Man, it's just, you know. It's that old, and I got this from you, that's what you look like, that's what you sound like, get over it. It's how you look. I had somebody in a class go, ah, oh, I don't want to, I feel I'm ugly. I'm like, well, at least give him a warning ahead of time, like, here's my mug, I'm coming over to see you. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> give him a warning, give him a warning. But this was, and I'll say this, like, if you're afraid to be, or if, if you had a fear to be on live, to be on live video, like that you're, you're talking to J man, you're talking to me, you're talking to your clients, you're talking to everyone every single day. It's the same thing. And that that's how I prefer live video over pre-recorded. Oh, hundred percent. Because this is the thing. If I'm going to record something for a replay, I will do it over and over. Oh, Oh, I huffed there. Oh, you heard me breathing too loud. Let me delete that. Let me move. Yeah. I go live, boom, live. That's it. It's done because people know it's live and in live people see your personality and, and it's okay if you mess up a little bit because, oh, he messed up. Yo, like, we bombed no the whole beginning oh, of this up. broadcast. We bombed it. Like, Jeff, oh, absolutely. you couldn't hear I, Jeff. I totally forgot about the, it. I'm like, you know, he's like, and I'm just like, it's okay. Like, I'll trim this out later or, or whatever. Cause you guys can be like, look at, we both done thousands of broadcasts live, whether it's zoom or it's on a, on social media. Stuff happens, man. So what? Jamin, I totally forgot about that part. I literally did that. So gone. You know, I some, mean, I didn't totally because me. it wasn't me. So <laughs> it's right. It was me messing up. <laughs> so uh, somebody once told me this. I think it was actually Tony Robbins. It's none of your business what people think about you. Oh, I love so that. That's been yeah, my I've motto. Yep. It's none of my business what people think about me. I will never ask. And if you volunteer, I'm going to ignore it because there's very few people in my life, my mom, my girlfriend, some of my family, that opinion of me matters. Most people, honestly, it doesn't. So if you mess up, so what? Do you really care about what some anonymous person on the internet say? Oh, you know, I used to all the time when I go live, I would grab my phone. I would literally stand under the, the light in our training room and I would look like I have less hair than I would do. And my first comment would be, Oh God, I look bolder than I am. Let me move over. Like, and I would start right. every single one doing that as a joke. Cause I don't like, it's none of my business. I'm not going to ask. And if I ask someone what they think about me, what they think about I'm doing is it's going to be someone whose opinion I value, not someone who some seller or some buyer that's never going to do business with you anyway. I, uh, I had a big conference last week that I was the MC for a couple hundred people. And one of the volunteers is like, dude, you know, what's the deal with, the dress sneakers and the t-shirt like i can't stand it right he's like i can't stand it and i go when in the world do you think i care what you think like i'm like dude i wake up i go you know what i like this i feel comfortable i feel like myself i feel confident let's go out and rock this show like that's that's how I'm, and i have like a routine i have it's just ah, i know you're worth same man thing. right when we when we were at Rhea, you saw me. I was in an Element T-shirt, you know, either slacks or jeans, and you know, a, a blazer or or a suit jacket, whatever it happens to be. Because this thing, Jamin, you're absolutely right. Because I don't care. Like, I don't. Like, this is the thing. When you talk business attire, business attire according to who? Because right. I have again, we'll go to agents. I don't work at IBM. That make crap loads of money. That are working, walking in with jeans that are skinny jeans, no socks, you know, yeah, they're wearing $600 shoes, a ripped up t-shirt and a jacket, and they're making millions of dollars. Right. Because this is the thing, when you can do that, people are like, well, how can he get away with that? And it's part of the confidence that it shows. Because again, respect the drip, care. respect the drip. My, my son said that you know, to me the other day. My wife had no idea what he meant. Like, okay, um, Urban Dictionary, guys, the drip is like your swagger. You know, your kids come out, they got a new outfit on, fresh, fresh kicks, and they're like, yo, ma, respect the drip. It means like they have their own personal style. Just let them be happy with who they are. If you're ever at any sort of event where they serve buffet-style food, any sort of event with buffet style food. You want to see the person in the room that has the most amount of confidence or does not care what anyone else has to say, the person who gets up first for the food. It's the truth. Because everybody else is like, oh, like, no one yo, else is getting it yet. I'm hungry, man. I got oh, to eat. Oh, now I can go. Survival of the fittest. Up for this. And think about that. 
that person that starts the food at that, whatever it happens to be, that person actually is leading the entire room. When you're talking about rapport building and you're talking about influence and persuasion, that's the person that's controlling the entire room. Jamie, I would do this podcast to the <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Lisa. I would. I do love my teeth and real, you know. Yeah. But um, <laughs> <clears throat> hey everybody, welcome to the podcast. Uh, yeah, have that swagger, that confidence. Do what you do. Um, <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> Let me see. Hold on. So let's finish off with like applying this also to like uh, cold calling, whether it's telemarketing or door knocking, not saying whether that's legal. It's, it's, it's still not legal in New York state, right? We still on a, yes, I think we're still on a state emergency. Oh shoot. <laughs> ah, it's just, <laughs> sorry, I had to do it. That's, that's a good one. As you notice, for those of you who've listened to this, in the, those of you who've listened to this in the past, I don't know how to stop it though. Those of you who listen to the past before, J-Man usually has all the buttons and I don't, and I figured out how to do that today. <coughs> dum, dum, dum. King Kong. You think so? Yeah, yeah, I could see that. I could see that. Yeah. Okay. So all what are right. we saying about door knocking and... Oh, just uh, applying again the same same concept that when when you are prospecting in any way, like to have that, and, and there's, there's a fine line between confidence and cockiness, right? Uh, the, yeah. the, the confidence when, when I, I, my, I did 43 transactions my first year and I, I did that mo like a lot of door knocking for sale by owners were my favorite. And I would go grab the sign out of the yard and be like, Hey, how you doing? <laughs> like, What are you doing? I'm here. What do you mean you're here? Well, I understand that it, it, you didn't put your house in the MLS because you want to save the fee for service, right? Well, if I could show you a way the fee for service would be built right in. Is there a way that we could work together? St start wiping my feet. It just get in, right? One out of 10 people will go, you son of a bitch, you better put that sign back in the yard. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I'll see you next week. I'll check back in, right? It's funny because everybody listens to this from Manhattan. They're like, what are yard signs? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, there were signs before there was the World Wide Web, folks. But it is, and I think even, <clears throat> listen, even how you knock on that door, are you doing the... Dun, 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 dun. Hello? No. H hi, hello? Dun, 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 dun. That was my knock. I wouldn't do the police knock because the then you might get somebody shotgun. with a shotgun. Yeah. You know, if you go there, oh, boom, 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 then I'm like, yo, you might hear that. But it's, it's even, and let's, it's even how you stand is the confidence. So there, there was actually a study done by Amy Chudney, Chuddy, I think is her name. And she was, talks about um, female MBA students that received lower grades for participation in class. And she did this study and had them stand in what she called the Wonder Woman or Superman pose mm -hmm. for two minutes prior to a presentation and then had another group sit in a, oh, what is J-Man doing? Tell me he has a Superman cape and he's going to pop in here with a Superman cape. <laughs> you were looking for him, aren't you? So he had them, had, uh, she had people standing with their, you know, shoulders back, Superman, Wonder Woman pose for two minutes um, prior to a presentation and then had another group sit down in what's called an inferior position. Legs crossed at the ankles, arms crossed and hunched over. Is that a Superman belt? I don't have the Superman noise. But what they found out was this. When they did a presentation, the people who stood came across more confident. It actually increased your I can't think of the the um the hormone in the hormone in your in your court oh your cortisol, cortisol levels, which are your stress hormone, went down when you stood like this prior to it. And when you in an inferior position, leaning over hunch with legs crossed, like you were said, your cortisol, your stress levels actually went up. They can measure that that hormone. So I mean, like it's literally just doing that brings the air of cop that I wouldn't do it in front of a client, but doing that prior to it. Right. It's also the same exact thing when, when we get nervous. Um, this is you have either foval or focal vision, meaning staring vision. So if you stare at something. Staring directly at something increases the stress hormone, 
When you go into foveal or peripheral vision, when you actually open up your vision and not staring, stop Jamie, that's creepy. And staring at, and you open up to, to foveal or peripheral vision, you cannot induce, you cannot become stressful when you're in foveal vision. It's impossible. This is what they teach um, uh, police officers when they do high speed chases. What they'll do is, is they say, imagine a box around your vehicle and you can see all four corners of the box. And they measure the stress level in their voice when they're in foveal, you know, peripheral vision. I'm sorry. Yeah, peripheral vision or focus vision. And when you go focused. So if you're standing there knocking at a door and you're like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, what's going on here? <laughs> of course you're going to oh be my, stressed. Oh, my God. Somebody might answer. I have to talk to them. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So, of course, you're going to be stressed. But there's stuff that you can do that will bring down that stress level and will actually boost your confidence. Because I said in the beginning, the only way of the only way of knowing you can do something is to actually do it. And confidence is your reward for doing it. That's it. Confidence is your reward for doing it. Yeah, I mean, you're training yourself that that fight or flight. I know that for me, when like when it's I'm speaking at a big event, there's always good. You're, there's always going to be nerves. I don't care if you've spoken a That's million it. times, right? It's it's. And I'm going to interrupt real quick. And I say, if you no longer get those nerves, get out of this industry. Get out of this oh, right. Industry. That means you. That means you don't care anymore. And so it's it. But you train mm -hmm. yourself. Like for me, it's like okay, I'm ready to go. And in that in that five minutes, or when when the intro, when they're introing you, it's like, oh, sh I'm on. Let's go. Let's go. You got to like hype yourself mm -hmm. up for the fight. Hype up. Right. Or or the person who doesn't do as well, who who has that imposter syndrome, they're like, oh my gosh. I'm going to fail. I'm going to mess up there. I'm not going to remember this. I'm not. Eh, eh, eh. And the, and that's false evidence appearing real. Right. Because then the things that they fear most yep. happen where if you're like, yo, I'm, I'm let's go. I'm going to rock this out. That's how I feel. It's, it's like a, an event every time that I go to do something because it is. <laughs> right? It's the build up. You know, <clears throat> some people have a playlist. Something that they'll play in their, you know, on their phone and their, your AirPods, whatever it is prior to it to get them pumped up. <clears throat> some people listen uh vomiting on themselves what was that movie eminem eight mile yeah eight mile yeah. you know that Calm was a nervous and ready. Head of, but guess what puked you know mom's spaghetti when he broke down when he broke. that actually used to be one of my songs really when i first when i yeah that used to be yep that used to be one of my songs it was just it just like put me in that you know what i got this Here, i got one for you Hello, Cool J. Mama said, "Knock you out" was one of mine too. Is this one of your songs? Yeah, get sold. To the windows, to the wall. Fresh paint goes don't, on them walls. Don't finish the real song. To, no, fresh paint the goes song. on them walls till okay. all these buyers call. We're gonna meet, meet, meet in the office. I got the deets, deets, deets. Okay, perfect. Well, I just wanted to see, make sure it's a parody. PG thirteen, folks. <clears throat> but I mean. To me, it's we talk the back to the imposter syndrome is you're not an imposter unless you truly are. And then guess what? If you have enough confidence in what you say, and if you have enough swagger and style, it doesn't mean it <clears throat> you can still get away with doing what you're doing. Tony Robbins says it all the time. Style is more important than substance initially. You need that style, you need that swagger, you need that confidence to get in the door, to get to that conversation with the person, to start it. You need the substance. But if all you have is substance, you don't have any of that style or swagger, people are never going to want to meet with you. Uh, I had a friend that I used to do Spartan races. But I had a friend that I used to do Spartan races with. He, he always used to say, like, look, at, you're going to get found out under the bright lights of competition, man. You either got to have a fight plan or a flight plan. One of the two. If you don't train for it, then you're not going to be ready and you're going to get found out. <clears throat> and really, let's actually talk about. So why do agents not like scripts and dialogues? Oh, it's not my mm -hmm. words. Guess what? You memorize them and you repeat them and then you make them your words. The first problem is it. you're trying to make your own words and you don't even know how right. you. Yeah. Memorize what is it? Internalize. I, there's a process. I don't remember what mm -hmm. it is, but that's what you, you make do. It your own. Oh, yeah. I don't like scripts. <clears throat> How many of you watch movies, TV, even reality shows? Because all reality shows are scripted to a certain extent. Why like, is nobody we, talking to us today? I feel like I know we we are. But we got a lot of people watching. Good job. 
And then we got a lot of people watching. Yo, man, you guys Jamie, quiet. Jamie, you lacking confidence. I'm lacking confidence now. You guys are, I needed like a wah, wah. J-Man. Yeah. J-Man, J-Man, no, 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 no. Is anybody there? That's what you get. That's what you get. I had a woohoo someplace, but I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> There's excited applause. <laughs> Well, All right, let's maybe, close the show. Listen, we're almost done. Questions today because it's like, a, yeah, but it's like acting. So, yeah, so let's close it up. We're almost done. So now, now they're talking to us. When we say we're almost done, now. Oh, Beverly, good oh, afternoon. So you couldn't sell for sale by owner. So now you're calling me. <laughs> I understand. So, yeah, I, I'll leave my, my last parting words. Practice builds confidence because you have to practice and then you have to do. So, you know, so that imposter syndrome, that person, that I'm not good enough. You are. Because as soon as you start thinking, I'm not good enough, I don't have this, I don't have that, that's when you become not good enough and not having those skills. Your mind defeats you more than any other agent, more than any other person in this entire world. It's your mind, nobody else's. So you either can program your mind to be your best friend and your best ally and your most positive person, or you can program your mind to be that little devil on your shoulder, that sister saying, you're not good enough, you're not good enough, you're not good enough. And this is the thing for everybody there. If you have that thought in your head, you're not good enough, I'm not good enough, I'll never do This is based on psychology and NLP. Make that voice Mickey Mouse. To have that same voice that says you're not good enough, make it sound like Mickey Mouse. Make it sound like Donald Duck because you know why? Hi Jamie's there. laughing. Because could you listen you're to Mickey Mouse saying that You're not good enough, Jeffrey. <laughs> or Goofy or, or that. It totally changes it because it's yeah. you that's going to make you succeed or fail. Nothing else. Well, and, and I'll say that's one of the reasons why I like running. It doesn't have to be running for you. It could be running. It could be biking. It could be walking down the street. Do something that challenges not just your body, but your mind, because at least once a week, I'm doing something that's extremely difficult. And and in there, I'm training my mind because there's a time where my mind goes, oh man, what you ate the wrong thing. You didn't get enough sleep. Oh, you, you should have trained harder. You could take a break. Nobody's going to know. And then I have to interrupt that pattern and go, I have a fight with the only person that matters, myself. With my mind, and if I can win that fight, then the rest of the day is cake, right? The rest of the day, when somebody Absolutely. says, "Oh, this, this," eh, no, I won my, I won against myself. That devil on my shoulder, just like you said, who's saying like, "You're not good enough. You're not a runner. You're not fast. It's too cold. It's too hot. It's too whatever it is." I'm like, pew, and that's why, like, if you if you follow my story, and I'm going all day, all day, baby, I'm switching my mindset to tell myself. I got this all day. So don't try to creep in because there's no room for you. Absolutely. This is a good way to end it. You are. Jeremiah's J. Man Monero, J. Man Speaks. I am Jeffy Scott Stan with Douglas Elmer Real Estate. And this is another episode of Much to Say About Nothing. And we have a lot to say about a lot of things, but I don't. I, 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 I just don't. Like We're playing our new song that was picked. Let's see. Make it a great day, everybody. This is perfect. I like it, right? <laughs> That's how Jeffrey dances, too. It's, it's two steps. No, that is not how I dance. She's like a sprinkler. Oh, the bop. Peace right. out. Let's we'll see y'all next week. <laughs>